Hello and welcome, this is Eugene Bogdistov speaking, and today, if I understand correctly, you can even see me. Usually I'm not on my slides, but this time you will have to see me. The reason why I am recording this video is because we have had recently an exam, and one of the students was too nervous. He barely passed the exam, but I think he knew the information much better than he could present it. And that is why a colleague of mine suggested that I record a video on how to reduce stress during a presentation or during the exam. And what I'm going to present to you is a small part of our business communication class, but I think it is important that you know it. So mostly I do it for my students, but I can also do it for everybody. If you are interested in the tools, in interested in the topic, let me know, write down in comments and share your opinion. So about the stress, what we have to do, think about the following. It's actually whatever happens, it's just a game. It's not serious. Whatever you do, any presentation, it may seem to you as it is important, as it is serious, as the whole life depends on it, but actually it is not. And it is really just a game. And just thinking about your presentation or about your exam as about the game is already a very good idea. But it is not all, and I'm going to show you also how you do it, and also before, we come to how to do it, I want to share with you some thoughts. Actually, why are you serious? This is the question. And there are several reasons, and first of all is we care of how we appear. Uh, I hold many presentations and I'm not nervous at all. Actually, I'm very seldom nervous. But I used to be. When I started making my presentations, when I started, when I was a student, when I was a doctoral student, and actually I mostly to care about how I appear. I didn't want to appear stupid, I didn't want to make a mistake, I didn't want my colleagues to think bad of me and so on. So this is one of the reasons why we are nervous. We care about what people think about us, we have a certain vision of ourselves and we think that if we appear in a different way than we are, then people may make a wrong picture of us. That is, that is not actually what we want to do. So, we care how we appear, we care what people think about us, and we have a different vision of self. And I think this is one of the things that makes you also nervous when you watch a video with yourself, when somebody recorded you, then you hear how weird your voice sounds, and you hear how your gestures are, and you, you don't believe it because you thought you were acting and articulating and showing everything, and on the picture you just stand like this, and you are not opening the mouth and so on. And this makes us feel not good. And here I start with the first trick, what you can do, and the first trick is actually do something stupid. Hear me roar, so I'll just do something like this one. <coughs> this will make the situation so much stupid, and everybody will perceive you in so much wrong that whatever will happen afterwards would be already good. So do something, I don't know, I have seen many things what people do before going, to the floor before doing something, but doing something weird is a good start. You will not believe it, but after you have done something like... Nobody cares what's going to happen. Everybody would expect something, and whatever you do, it will be better than the expectations. So one of the good tricks is actually to do something that is weird, and you will understand it is weird, and you will know whatever comes will be different, will be better, will be structured, and so on, and people will not be shocked. So this is already a good start. The second technique I want to tell you is the Stanislavski technique. Uh, he is one of the famous actors and those who wrote books about how to train actors. The books are from the whatever 1910-1920, something like this. I started reading his book, I didn't finish it, but I read sufficient to understand how it works, because I didn't want to become a professional actor, but I wanted to understand how actors work and how they can appear on the scene more natural. And one of the techniques that Stanislavski suggests is the what-if technique. Interestingly, if I tell you, play James Bond, it will completely constrain you. You won't know what to do. But if I tell you, what if you were James Bond? All of a sudden, the life becomes different. It's like taking a different point of view, as if you are standing outside of yourself and watching yourself, and in this moment, you are acting like James Bond, because you, it is not you. You are somewhere there, looking at yourself from the, from the ceiling, from the uh, far corner. And here is somebody else acting. This what-if technique helps a lot. If you don't believe me, just try it out. It is so simple, and think about what if I were completely calm? 
you will immediately notice that you become calm because it's not you. The person who is presenting is calm and you are just standing from outside and watching how this person is presenting. What if you were James Bond going through the presentation or exam? Really, what if? What if Daniel Craig would sit there, you know, playing James Bond, like relaxed and easy and talking and maybe making some small jokes in a perfect British English? So this would be something. If you get into this what if state, you will come down and your behavior will change. That's, by the way, what we teach in the business communication class. It is about the alter ego and how you can change your alter ego. Again, what if it is just a game? What if this is not the crucial milestone in your life? What is just a game? And by the way, it is. It is the game because at the end, what you do is just to move in a game. Your life is long. Your life has a lot of challenges. You will have to do a lot of things. And this small exam, this presentation, just a small move. It is a strategic move because if you pass the exam good, you will have the good credit. It will help you in the future. It will help you make your CV better. You will have the better knowledge. And yeah, your presentation or your exam is just a move in the game. But it is a game. If it is a move, have you played whatever you are playing? How do you play? Enjoy it relaxed, uh, having a lot of fun. This is the feeling with which you should go to the exam, because in the exam you go there to play against the other players. You have the cool chance to learn something. If you play in the game, whatever it is, Monopoly or Poker, you try to play, you're not looking on the statistics and cards, you try to play with people, you try to see how they are, what they want, what they know. You try to learn from them, and this is actually what you have to do if you make a presentation or if you go to the exam. Learn about your examining committee, what they think about the topic. Through your answers, through your questions, you can get into their heads and understand what they think about it. It is your chance to practice whatever you do, a presentation or the exam, you go there and practice because the things you are presenting, the things you are answering or saying, saying in an exam is things that you will need in your life. You go there and practice. These are the academics. They are very good at this. Try to surprise them, surprise them, try to show them how good you are, and this is also practice for your life. And by the way, there is nothing to lose. The only way to get zero points is not to come to the exam, is not to hold the presentation. If you get there, and here we go, you start collecting points from zero. If you open your mouth, it's automatically 30%. If you open your mouth and say something good, it's already 60%. If you say not only something good, but also in a very good way, it is already additional 30%. And if you can surprise your examining, examining committee or your whoever is listening to your presentation, it will be another 10%, which will give you 100 The problem is that our students usually assume they have the very good grade, probably driven by the knowledge. They learned a lot. They assume they have the 1.0 in Germany or 100%. And they did use the points. Actually, no. You start with zero and you earn the points. And this is the game. You go there without having anything. If you don't go, you will get zero points. So for those who believe they have the 100% and they're losing points, if you don't go there, you won't get the 100%. You will get zero. That's why I start with zero and then add your points and then it will really help you. The next technique that I'm going to share with you. I know it is fast, but I know that people don't like long videos. That's why we try to keep it short. Use an activator. An activator is something that sets you into a certain state of mind. And I used to attend a seminar in Ukraine and there was a worldwide known presenter. And each time he went to the scene, he marched. It was really the march, like military march. Like with all the stuff and really loud, he went there and this was his activation. It shocked everybody. Imagine you're sitting there in a room, I don't know how many, 200 people, and suddenly from behind somebody is like marching, really with a military march to the scene, getting there, making something <coughs> and starting a very enormous lecture. So this um, activator could shock people. This is what we had with this one, shock them then afterwards everything will be easy for you and for them. And the second one, it is an activator because you have to get to this mood. When you present as, as much as I do, then you start enjoying it, but you need to come into the state. It's not like you start presenting in the, in the tram or in the bus. You have to get to the state and a good way to get into the state is to introduce an activator. Can be a loud coughing. <coughs> Something like this. 
Um, it can be head shaking, that's what I do usually. I do something like this sometimes. Not because it looks like and not because I have some problems with my neck. I just do it as an activator because I you know afterwards it's like preparing for fight. I'm ready and I know that I go to this mood that I'm going to go to the floor and kick there and knocks off. Uh, and yawning is right away very good. If you yawn, look, it sends an automatic signal to your body that has to relax. And interestingly, it will activate the mirror neurons in your audience and they will relax. They will mimic your behavior. Some will also yawn, some will not, but they will do it in their heads and they will get relaxed. As soon as you do something like this, those people who sit in front of you will get relaxed and you get relaxed. That's why it's also a very good activator, by the way, it's also shocking. If somebody gets to the scene to talk to you and instead of <coughs> makes Great idea, why not? And many others, so you can use any activator you want, it might help you, it should. Smiling, smiling is next activator, and also this is the way how you can, <coughs> sorry, uh, add some body response to yourself, because there is a study that shows that people smile, they start becoming, they start becoming happy, they feel better when they smile, and other people, if they look at you, they start mirroring your behavior, and they not only relax, but they also uh, start, start feeling better and start having better mood. That is why the true smile, the really true smile, the true smile is when you have also these muscles here activated. This is the Action Unit 25, if I remember it correctly, from the Facial Action Coding System. We also talk about it during our business communication class. That's why don't forget to join our class. <clears throat> it has impact on how you feel. If you talk about something with such a smile, it relaxes you and relaxes other people. And they, we, by the way, made a study, they reduce the psychological distance to the object of your presentation. If you want to distance, make a fake smile or polite smile. If you want to get closer, something like this would really help establish the contact and get into the things. People will feel they're listened, people will feel they're looked at and so on. So, smile is good. Your body responds with positive thoughts to a smile. Smile with a <clears throat> without saying something, uh, just with an eye contact will already reduce the distance. Just If you look at people, if you feel happy, people will feel this happiness too, and you will relax by the way. Coming to the next trick, I think we have not so many, uh, is the take your time and avoid the scripts. Again, in our class we talk about lying, and liars use different tricks in order to get some additional times. You are not a liar, but use the tricks. And here are the tricks that liars usually use. Repeat the question. They ask you the question, just repeat it, as if you try to understand it better. While repeating, you get additional 3-4 seconds, which corresponds to, I think, there was a study that shows that we think 20 times faster than we speak. So, 3 times of delay while repeating, 3 seconds of delay while repeating, will lead to 90 seconds in your head that you will have to process different information. So, it will just give you opportunity to think about all the options and think about how the questions how the question comes, uh, is it a good question, bad question, are there any background knowledge required and so on. So this simple trick, just repeating the question, will give you much more time than you think and will automatically get you some additional confidence. Uh, always thank for a great, great question, that's what Angela, Angela Merkel used to do. Uh, thank you for this great question, by the way, it's very good that you talk about it, it's a very important thing. While she said this, and while many people do, when they say it, actually they again win some time to think about what they're going to answer and how the answer will arrive at the, by this audience. Let me think about it a second. This is the liar wouldn't say it usually, uh, but you can. In the exam, during the presentation, it's absolutely normal if you need some time to think. Let me think about it a second. Take this three, five seconds, not too much, this will give you additional, as we say, times 30, like 120 seconds in your head to process information, to prepare to answer the question. It will give you a feeling, additional feeling of confidence. And again, what many people do, what many students do, uh, when they present, they try to have a script and have the cards and whatever, and people who prepare for exam, they also try to have the cards. It's terrible, it looks terrible, and it makes you nervous, and it makes people like always looking at the cards and next one, and next one, and next one. And it is your presentation. 
or it is the exam that you have prepared for. You know everything, you know all the questions, you know all the slides. The question is just to remember, and for this we have several tools. First of all, milestones. It's sometimes not so important what you're going to say, but it is important that you have the slides and there is a slide with a topic. The topic, you have to talk about it. You know what to say about it. You know the topics within your course that you are trying to attend or uh, attending the exam for. Just knowing the topic, you can speak about it. Don't forget the key topics and what to fill it with. You will find it out. The same with the presentations. Having the slides and take your time in a way script, as you see, already gives them a kind of um, milestone for me and I know how I, how I can feel it. If I had an empty slide, I could feel it with something because I know what I want to talk about. Use pictures reminder. For example, you see uh, the clock here and the clock reminds me on time on the board in the script this is the picture that i use and previously i used to have slides with only pictures but my students actually not really liked because when they prepare for the exam they would like to have text but having only pictures was great because i have we think in pictures and pictures help activate the memory that's why having pictures would also greatly help and there is a method of locking uh, that I introduced to my students very shortly. The method is big. There is a book about it. I think it's called something like Einstein is walking on the moon. And this is the book where they describe how this method work. There is a link in the presentation. You can, I don't know, copy or just type it in and you can see what the method is about. The main idea is you need to find a location that you know very well. For instance, your house or your bedroom. You know how it looks like. You know how big it is. You know where different things stay. And then you have to imagine some things that are related to your presentation and put them there. Uh, and these pictures, you need to have only two things. You need to tie them to location and the pictures have to be weird. Let's assume we want to talk about the lecture that we're talking about. Repeating questions, um, saying thank you, and let me think about it a second. These are the three things we want to say in the slide and you want to remember these three things. So imagine this is your bedroom, you know it, you know the door, you know this door, you get to this door, you open it, and immediately what you see, there is a clock on the floor, it is broken, it's just rotating, constantly rotating, just jumping and jumping and jumping, and there are some spring um, coming from this watch, or from this clock, sorry, and it's just laying and really behaving itself, as if this clock is living, as if this clock is just trying to jump somewhere and something happened with the clock. It constantly tries to repeat this section, constantly tries to do it. You step over this clock, you go further and you see a Bible with a big word, thank you for this written with blood on the Bible. The blood drops from the Bible and you see how trans is like a horror movie. Somebody wrote with the blood the word thank you. It was great and the blood is dropping on the floor and you see how it is running there. And finally you come to the Bible, you open it on one of the pages, there is a bookmark on the page, you open it on the pages and there is only one word written again with blood, second only one second. So if you think about it, these are the pictures you will never forget. Just if you think about it, it's like a horror movie, the old clock jumping, the Bible with the blood dropping from it, and with a bookmark, a second, only one word within the Bible, one empty page with only one word. This is something you will not forget. And if you want to remember it, and I'm pretty sure that after this presentation, if you imagine it all, you will be easily, you can easily remember it. You will just need to think about how you enter the room and you will never forget this clock, you will never forget the Bible, you will never forget this second word. And these are the three items that I wanted to talk about when we started this slide. So this is called the method of Loki, very simply explained. There is again a book written about it, there are specialists in the world who work with this method. It is because of two reasons, because we evolutionary can notice very good the locations where something lies, that's why we know sometimes we came to kitchen to a certain uh, part of the kitchen because we wanted something. We cannot remember what we wanted, but we remember that place. We went there because of this something. This is exactly the, 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 the phenomenon that I talk about. And the second one, we notice the weird things. This is our evolutionary psychology. If something is weird, not normal, we need to remember, we need to prepare for a fight or something else. So combining these two methods will help you prepare to your exam presentation and remember all the things that you want to remember. 
Again, I'm going to talk about the Stanislavski method. Uh, he had different methods, and what he noticed is that when the actors, when they play a role, they sometimes need to cry, they need to laugh. And in order to make it sound and look natural, people have to leave the situation. And he said that good actors, they leave a certain situation and they remember the situation with all the feelings. And that they just remember. And each time they have to cry, they remember the situation. And this remembering with all the associated um, memories, feelings, emotions, body response, it all comes alive. And that is why the really good actor, they, they, they cry. They don't do something like this. They really cry. And they laugh. And they really laugh honestly. And they smile honestly with a true smile just because they remember the situation that they experienced. The same is for you. If you go to the exam, you want to become. You have to train the situation. Again, remember, this is such a thick book that I'm trying to put into one slide. That's why if you want to know more, you'll have to read it or need to find more information. But what we need you to do, we need you to get to the simple state where you feel yourself calm, where you are happy and when everything is fine. And it can be different situations. In my event, I remember a situation when I, I had to talk in front of people when the war in Ukraine, the second phase of the war in 2022 started, and I needed to talk to consultants, they explained what happened there because we wanted to collect some money, donations, and so on. And it's not about just reporting. I had to feel it. That's why I felt it all. I talked to people and so on. I get completely into this mood. And when I presented, it was a shocking experience for them. Actually, for me too, just because it was so emotional, not how I usually behave, just because I felt it, I lived through it. And each time I remember the situation, I get into this feeling. I remember and I feel now how my heart rate is increasing. I remember how, how you become angry because of you have no power. Just somebody decided to attack your country without giving any warnings in advance, just, just so, and the people are struggling, people are dying, and your friends died there, and friends are fighting there, and so on. And it makes you feel this feeling, you will not forget it. And theoretically, you can remember the situation, but it can be a positive situation, and get to this positive situation. Situation when you are calm. When you are competent, calm, sure, secure, this is the one we need. Think of the situation, find it out, and then you have to do something with it. Remember all the details for five, 10 minutes, spend five, 10 minutes on remembering all the details of the situation, how you felt, how you looked like, how you were dressed, what were the other people, how was the weather, uh, whether it was the sun shining in my eyes like now, or was it raining and so on. Try to remember and experience all these feelings. Repeat after a while and repeat uh, more than 10 times in the next days. Just need to repeat the situation. And then it will be like, probably you also have these feelings when you are angry about something or somebody, and each time you remember the situation, you become angry, although it happened a month ago, or although you're far away from the location, from the event and so on. This is what we need, but this time for calmness. And then before you go to exam, you get into the state, and you remember the situation, and this calm, competent, secure feeling, you get into the room, you make a presentation, or you pass your exam. The most common techniques what other people use is breathing and meditating. And yelling relaxes your body. So this is the first way, first step. Meditation helps. In the event of meditation, as I understand meditation, is trying not to think, trying to get rid of the thoughts. Because these are the thoughts that evoke, that elicit some emotions. These are the secondary emotions, of course, not the primary emotions when you see the snake. This is not because of your thoughts. It is because you saw the snake. But in this event, you are mostly driven by your thoughts. How will I look like? And what people will think about me? And am I dressed correctly? Did I learn everything? If you get rid of all the thoughts, and if you learn it, you will get into the very calm state. And some people can do it immediately, automatically, just because they trained it. The more you do, the more often you do it, the better you will be in this one. There are also other meditative techniques that I can share with you. Again, there are books written. I'll try to put it into one slide and a few sentences. The first one is Tree of Birds. I use it very often, closing my eyes and imagining that it is, I'm staying in the evening in front of a big tree with a lot of ravens. I like ravens. <clears throat> and each raven is a thought. And I try to try to get them all away from me, from this tree. I try to... I try to do something to they fly away and each time a raven flies away a thought disappears it's a kind of hard hard but you will notice that getting them all away will lead you to the state when you have no thoughts this is 
letting all the thoughts if new thoughts come you just imagine it is another raven that came to your to your trees and you, you need to let it fly away and so on this is really common technique and really helps me uh, the second technique that I wrote, uh, that I read in a book um, about, I think was by Michael Mikalko, Creativity Techniques, and he said that the muscle relaxation is very good, and you imagine that your body is a bundle of different balloons, and you imagine you let the air off each of these balloons, and each finger, there are like small, small balloons, and you let air from this balloon, and this one, and this one, and if you think of your muscles as balloons and you're letting air and you just go through your body completely, starting with your toes and up to your head, you will immediately feel the relaxation. Each time you try to let air from this balloon, you feel how the muscles relaxing because we have this automatic response. We do something and our body responds immediately and your muscles relax and you get into very, very calm state. And with this calm state, you won't be angry, you won't be afraid of the of the exam or the presentation. It will really help you. And uh, breathing, if you want to breathe and you don't know how to breathe, breathe as if you are sleeping. When we sleep, we breathe deep, we breathe long, and this gets you to the very calm state, very automatically calm state, and your body gets into the state of kind of dreaming, a state of very calmness. This helps immediately. So, I think I have two more slides, and the first one, what I usually do and what other people do, is to start with a small talk, because you come to exam, presentation, whatever you do, use this trick. Just say, hi, how are you? Before the presentation starts, by the way, actually it has started, but nobody knows, you say, before the presentation starts, by the way, how are you? How was yesterday evening? When I talk to my students, uh, did you meet yesterday? Okay, did you go somewhere? Did you go to discotheque? And okay, how do you feel? And did you have enough sleep? And so on. I use this time to get into the state of rapport when I understand how people feel and they understand how I feel. They get used to my language because you see I'm speaking fast and my accent is very spe specific. That's why they need to get into it and a small conversation gets me into the state of something. They learn you, you learn them, you establish rapport and then you see you shouldn't be afraid. In the event of exams the same. Before I start with the exam I want to ask how was the committee, how are you, am I the first candidate, how was the previous presentation, how was the previous exam and what are the expectations, not too high hopefully, not too high hopefully and so on few jokes and you get into the state, you see how is their mood, if you see something wrong, you can say, is everything okay, can I help you with something, I see, no, everything, okay, let me continue, let's go to the exam. And one of my most beloved presentations is the one by Sirk and Robinson, great presentation, and if you watch it, this is the one with 10 million downloads, great presentation. Look at the start, how easily he gets into the mood, into this presenter mood, how he establishes rapport with the audience within few seconds. Great start, great presentation. See how he did it and try to do the same. And the final slide is, uh, by the way, nervousness is good. Nervousness is your readiness of your body to respond, readiness to remember, readiness to do something. Too much nervousness is not good. Too much nervousness means you cannot focus on anything. That's why being nervous is absolutely good. And each time I go to any presentation, to any class, I'm a little bit nervous and this is how it should be. Being afraid is not good. Fear blocks your behavior. Don't be afraid. Reframe it. Think about it is the game. It is not how I will look like. It is the game. It is not about how many points I lose. It's about how many points I gain, how many points I get, and so on. Anger is also not a very good state. You will be fast, but it seems that people who are in the fear or anger state, uh, who are in the anger state, they act without thinking and analyze information not sufficiently. And those who are afraid, they analyze information sufficiently deep, but they have a problem with starting talking and having the block when you're blocked in this blockade of your thoughts. So try to control your emotions, try to reframe them, thinking about the game, thinking about something you can learn, get into rapport. This is something what you need in order to get a bit calmer and have a better presentation and a better exam. I hope it will help you and I wish you all the best and I'll see you when I see you, whatever is going to happen. Bye-bye. Um,